So uh, my name is Tidjan Ishkanyan. Uh, today I will give an introduction to fractional calculus. Uh, okay, so here is uh, plan of my talk. Uh, so what is fractional calculus? Then I will give some small historical overview uh, and definitions of uh, different fractional different integrals. And then I will uh, switch to all from language 13.1 and 13.2 functions, fractional decoupled to D and their numerical versions. Uh, I will speak about applications. How can we apply this fractional calculus in real world problems? Uh, and we'll say a couple of words about the upcoming tutorial that Devendra already mentioned and the Wolfram U course. Uh, and at the end, I will give some references and the useful links uh, on the topic. So let's start. Uh, we all know that differentiation and integration are two fundamental operations of mathematical analysis. So the first derivative of a, a square function is x, while the result of integration is cubic function. And uh, the, we can generate the nth order derivative of this function. So it's written here, including gamma function. And uh, in fact, uh, here we can put even negative n's and uh, get the nth order antiderivative of this squared function. However, when we're speaking about derivatives or integrals, we're always assuming that this order n is integer, it can be positive, negative, but it's integer. So what if we can, uh, we could uh, extend this uh, differentiation integration processes to non-integer or even complex orders? So let's um, make a small like toy uh, exercise. Let's take this uh, formula for the end order derivative of square function and like put half into that. So the output will be something like this. And uh, formally, this is nothing else than the half order derivative of the square function. So if we will repeat this once more, so we'll take the end order derivative uh, formula of this function and put the one half into that, we will get immediately x, which is nothing else than the ordinary derivative of a uh, square function, but we gained it like using two, say, half order differentiations. Uh, these examples illustrate the basic idea of fractional calculus, uh, which generalizes the classical operations to some uh, real or complex mm, number orders. Uh, a bit of history. So in fact, in the Wikipedia article, uh, there is a nice historical overview about fractional calculus. I will leave a link here. So uh, fractional calculus was introduced in uh, one of the papers of Abel. And uh, he introduced all the like basic, basic ideas of that. Uh, he was uh, solving the mechanical problem, Abel's mechanical problem, which is uh, to define this equation for this curve from the prescribed transit time. We will not go into details, but I will say some words about the equations that uh, he obtained. So this is one of the equations from this article from 1823. And uh, in more complex form, he obtained that in the second article. This is it. And in fact, after several uh, simple manipulations, this can be rewritten in the form, in this form, which is nothing else than the than the Caputo fractional derivative. We are now calling that Caputo fractional derivative. But everything started from the Abel's mechanical problem. Uh, so some details can be found in this article. Uh, link is here, so I will leave it. The file is uploaded in, in, in into the uh, Patable. So you can download this notebook and uh, play with the examples, uh, click on the links and so on. Uh, so in fact, uh, in fractional calculus, we are uh, working with uh, one unified operator uh, standing for differentiation and integration. And we are calling that fractional differ integral. The fractional differ integral is written here. Uh, where this alpha is the order of differentiation. It can be real or complex. Uh, the, the zero is the lower bound of different integral. We'll uh, see how, where it came. Uh, however, this, this, is not, uh, this can be anything, not only zero. Uh, there are a lot of different 
definitions for fractional differ integrals. However, uh, we will talk about uh, three of them, say main three differ integrals. The first one is called Grunewald Letnikov differ integral. That's written here. It is giving some definition uh, to fractional differentiation and integration uh, using some limits and the uh, infinite series. And it's extending, it's similar to the ordinary derivative definition via limits. However, this, this one is not very, say, useful uh, for analytic formulas and calculations. Uh, for them, we are using the next one that is called the Riemann Liouville differ integral. It, it's written here. And this is uh, in two words. This is like uh, a derivative of an integral containing the function that we're uh, differentiating or inter integrating, multiplied by some power, some power function. And uh, here we see the zero, the lower bound. It, it can be anything, in fact. For uh, simplicity, we are using the zero. Uh, this one, the Riemann Liouville differ integral, is a very powerful thing. The theory is rather well developed uh, about that. However, from practical point of view, it is not very uh, usable. Uh, for practical uh, problems, real world problems, we are using the third. Uh, differ integral that is called Caputo differ integral. It's written here. And this is an integral of a uh, derivative of the function. And of course, we can see that this Caputo differ integral and Riemann Liouville one, they are quite similar and they are connected, in fact, uh, by this formula. So Caputo differ integral th th is Riemann Liouville one minus some final sum. And in fact, uh, we are using this one for real problems. However, uh, we are generating the outputs using uh, the Seri Mario will approach and uh, some minus some sum. And of course, this Caputo different integral coincides with the Riemann Liouville one for negative alphas because this part is missing for that case. And the, you know, Caputo different integral is the same as the Riemann Liouville one for negative orders. This means for integration, fractional integration. Uh, below, I have an animation that is showing the behavior of like ordinary in the Riemann Liouville fractional derivatives of a square function. So, this is the function itself, this bold blue line. This is the first derivative, x. Uh, this is the integral cubic function. And we see that fractional orders, they are like, in some sense, they are interpolating between these ordinary derivatives and in integrals. This is the say, presentable example of what is fractional calculus. I want to what are the fractional derivatives. Okay, now let's turn to the functions that we have implemented. So in 13.1, uh, we have implemented two functions. First one is called fractional D. The second one is called Caputo D. And fractional D, uh, fractional D computes the riemann liouville fractional derivative. As I said before, it does not have a lot of applications, but it's very important in the theory. And uh, the theory is, is uh, well developed. There are a lot of books, articles, and uh, uh, Professor Oleg Marichev, uh, he, he derived around like 85,000 rules for different input functions, and uh, we're using um, some of them. Uh, the definition is written here once more. And let's take a look how can we use this definition to generate the fractional derivatives. Let's take a, a cubic function it's written here and just put it into the uh, into the definition of Riemann Liouville. So it will. So we are here. We are calculating say the the half order derivative of cubic function. And it's written here, and we will just repeat this uh, operation and we'll immediately get the first derivative of cubic function. And that's it. Uh, of course, this is very, uh, yeah, this is a very uh, simple example, but uh, for some, uh, when we're developing this fraction, we use this, this approach a lot. Uh, let's take a look on uh, on the following example. Oh, yeah. So let's calculate the any order of fractional de derivative quadratic function. It's written here. And uh, we can plot that and see that. Um, so the, this is the function. This is its first derivative, ordinary. This is the second derivative. And uh, the fractional derivatives, they are like going from the function to, to, to its ordinary derivatives. They are interpolating between them. 
this animation is about that. And uh, after I'm showing how we can we recover the uh, initial function, square function, using fractional integration. So here I am using the chain of integrations like the, of the, this order, three of them. So first I'm calculating the first ordinary derivative square function, then uh, using fractional integration, getting back to function. Uh, after I will, so now I will show some examples uh, on uh, two common mathematical functions. So fractional B applied on X, uh, expansion function will generate something like this. And here we see that this part stands for the ordinary differentiation. This is coming from the fractional part. This is quite a simple example. Let's take a look on Bessel functions. So fractional D applied on base LG will give something big, not very understandable, but it is uh, the fractional derivatives of Bessel functions are calculated using hypergeometric faithful function, which is understandable because Bessel function is a hypergeometric class of function is from this, this class. And finally, I would like to show a very, very important case, fractional D on Mayer G. Uh, the important case, the uh, important point here is that and we're applying fractional D on Mayer G, we're getting uh, back another Mayer G with shifted parameters written here. And this is very useful in the theory because we can uh, generate uh, fractional D rules for different inputs using their Mayer G representations, then apply fractional D on that and see, see the output. Uh, and uh, here I'm showing the table where we have fractional uh, derivatives of some common functions and ordinary derivatives of them. We see that for X, we have one more term, while uh, for sine, for example, the output is between hypergeometric functions and so on. Uh, okay, this was about fractional D and we are uh, going to the next function that was implemented in 13.1. It's Caputo D and it's uh, very important because uh, it is uh, the Caputo uh, derivative, differ integral. It's uh, taking also the initial uh, values of function and derivatives at some point of origin for this case. So here's the formula that we are using. And this is quite important for practical applications. So I will show some of them. Also one more basic uh, uh, property is that the Caputo D of uh, constant is zero, while the fractional D of constant is not zero. So this is uh, tying also Caputo D with the classical theory, classical calculus. So here, uh, let's take a look on Caputo D applied on some functions. So for ex exponential, we have this part that's coming from the fractional D, the Riemann Lewis part. This is the finite sum that I've showed. For base LG, the output is in hypergeometric functions. Uh, and now I'm applying Caputo D on a very, very important case in fractional calculus on meta clefter functions. Uh, so a meta clefter function, the vendor already told us about them, but they are very important as they are like analogs of exponential function in the theory of fractional differential equations. Uh, yeah, and so, uh, here I'm solving a differential equation. It's a fractional differential equation with constant coefficients and uh, containing the Caputo D of this order. And the output is written in meta clefter functions. If here I will uh, put like the ordinary derivative, then the output will be in X functions. So plotting the, this meta clefter, it's it, it has some oscillatory behavior. I think that Aram uh, Manaselian will talk a lot about uh, this type of problems. So let's, let's go to the next slide. Uh, and in 13.2, uh, we have implemented the numerical versions of fractional D and Caputo D because of course fractional D and Caputo D are important and rather powerful, but uh, as of their definitions, uh, when you are uh, applying them on complex functions, then these calculations might take a lot of time. And also for some cases, they can generate a very big and not understandable results. And even they can generate some results, including different root objects and so on. 
So uh, having numerical analogs is profitable. And uh, for example, for integrate, we have n integrates, for dissolve, we have n dissolve. And now for fractional D and capital D, we have n fractional D and n capital D. So the design of these functions is very simple. It's n fractional D function, the, the variable, the order of differentiation, and the point that we are calculating the value uh, numerical fractional derivative. So for uh, the output of these functions will, be, will always be uh, some number. Uh, so here is n fractional d, this is n coupled to d applied on meta letter functions. Using this uh, numerical versions of uh, fractional derivatives, we can uh, fastly, rapidly plot something. So for example, here I'm taking uh, this case, of plotting the, uh, plotting the, numerical fractional derivative of this order on an interval, on this interval. Uh, here is another example. I will not evaluate it because it will take quite more time, or quite a big time. But however, here I'm plotting the sine function and its uh, derivatives, fractional and ordinary. Yeah. And now I will say some words about the third approach, third definition of fractional deeper integrals. The Grunewald technical one that is not very useful in uh, in in, uh, from in in analytical problems, but it's very very useful in numerical um, evaluations. So uh, in n fractional d, we have two two methods. So, so the first one is called uh, riemann wheel It's understandable. The second one is called Grunewald technical. It is just uh, it, simply doing numerical calculations. However, we have implemented greenwald letnikov approach because uh, for mm, some uh, classes of functions, the riemann uh, and fractional D is not able to calculate because uh, the definition of it is very, very uh, difficult. However, greenwald letnikov is doing this. For example, like here I took this function okay, and uh, using this greenwald letnikov method, at this point, calculated the numerical uh, disorder derivative. If we will apply the remand, we will one, we will not get the answer because it's impossible to do it. Yeah, so I think uh, that was all about couple to the fractional D and their numerical uh, versions. Now uh, let's talk about applications. So generally speaking, fractional calculus is uh, gaining more and more applications in different areas of science. There are a lot of articles on this. Uh, the, these fractional differential equations are used in uh, different problems like fluid dynamics, diffusion problems, control theory, signal processing, and others. Uh, I will now show only one example. Uh, Aram Manaselian will talk about them in his talk. So uh, this is a very nice example. Here we are taking a fractional version of the wave equation. Uh, so this fractional version has some couple of these, uh, the one couple of D in it. Uh, and we are dissolving that. And the output is written in uh, meta letter and sine functions. And uh, we are able to plot it. So this is a nice plot. And uh, th th this was quite surprising that uh, dissolve is now able to, to solve also these type of equations. And this is very nice. Uh, also, uh, parallel to implementations, we made a big tutorial on fractional calculus. So it will be in 13.2 version. Uh, it covers all the topics of this presentations, presentation. And also it, will, it, it shows a lot of applications and real world problems. So this is the overview of that page. It will be available on 13.2. And also uh, we made a couple of webinars uh, new in 13.1 series. And uh, using that videos, we have created a Wolfram View course that is called Introduction to Fractional Calculus. It is available uh, via this link. And uh, in, th in that course, we discuss the, the history of fractional calculus, the approaches, different definitions, and so on, plus uh, a lot of examples of fractional differential equations, how we can solve them, plus how Laplace transforms and inverse Laplace transforms are working with these functions and so on. Uh, so, so let's 
I'm going to the end of my presentation. And uh, <clears throat> this is the summary. So as I've said before, distractional calculus is becoming more and more like used in different areas. And uh, uh, of course, when we are turning from classical differential equations to differential equations with fractional derivatives or integrals inside, then we, we are like extending the class of equations that we can work with, solve with. And of course, this means that we can uh, describe more physical phenomena uh, or even try to describe more, more precisely the already solved ones. And of course, understanding this potential of this topic, we have implemented this uh, fractional D, Caputo D, and fractional D and Caputo D functions, and uh, also added a lot of support to dissolve and Laplace transforms. Okay, so now a couple of words about references and useful links. Um, so here I have two books that are giving the basic theory of fractional calculus. Uh, this uh, article is quite interesting because it's giving the historical overview of that, uh, showing how Abel obtained <clears throat> these equations and uh, how he introduced this fractional calculus. Uh, this book is about uh, numerical approaches to fractional uh, different integrals, how to calculate them. And we used this book in uh, uh, to develop the functions for 13.2 and fractional D and then Caputo D. Uh, also, this, this is a link to uh, Wolfram's uh, blog post where he mentions this fractional D. Uh, I wrote a blog post also about fractional calculus. So it's the thing is here. Uh, this link is about our webinars uh, in uh, July and August, I think. And also, uh, I'm giving links to the reference pages of uh, these functions, mentioned functions, because we try to uh, add a lot of examples into that pages uh, to comprehensively cover all the, say, uh, the, all the aspects of algorithms, the weak points, and so on. And also we added a lot of examples of applications. How can we use them? So there will be a tutorial in 13.2 and also the link to the, to the course. Uh, I think that's all. Thank you for your time and attention.